job, Miss Jennifer. I appreciate the effort put into that. It's one of my favorite songs at Three Rivers Baptist Church. I've heard many people sing it and play it. It's one of my favorites. And uh, uh, it puts my mind in the right place. Now I... Um, Uh, preached this message twice already uh, in the truck driving down the road. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't seem to, um, uh, I, I got up, uh, went up to my study and tried to get my mind right and, and get my mind tuned into to the message for today. And I hope that some way, uh, the Lord will be a blessing to you and speak to me, speak through me to you. Um, I, I entitled it. I have two titles for it. Um, one's more catchy. Uh, it's called It Could Happen to You. Uh, it Could Happen to You. And when I started doing Google searches and different things, I, you come across, you want to see what's connected to it. There's a movie, a uh, movie connected to it. I've never seen it. It's about a guy uh, who um, goes to a restaurant, can't pay his tab, and tells the waitress, hey, I've got this, this lotto ticket, though. Um, uh, or I can't give her a tip. That's what it is. Pays the tab, but can't give her a tip and says, look, I can either bring you a tip back tomorrow or uh, if I win anything off this ticket, you can split it with me. And they won. He won, and he split it with her. He was a man of his word, split it with her. And, um, and, and of course, we say it could happen to you, and it's got good connotations, right? Enter this contest, and you could win this car. It could happen to you. Um, uh, play this game and you could win this prize. It could have happened to you. Great things, good things can happen to people. But as I was reading uh, this past week, I, I came across um, the story of Job. I came across the story of Job and I was looking at uh, Job and I thought, man, that could happen to me. That could happen to me. And uh, he lost it all in one day. He lost his children in one day. He lost his his, um, uh, his wealth in one day, his property, his home, uh, lost it all in one day. Uh, he lost his health in one day. Um, there are people who woke up yesterday who planned on a big uh, New Year's Eve, who planned on what they were going to do. They sat around a, a table or a bonfire somewhere in the country. They sat around a bar. I don't know where they sat, but they made New Year's resolutions. I'm going to drink less as he sat at the bar. This is the last beer I'm going to have. And Janu or January 1st, I'm going to do better. Uh, some people sat around saying, no more drugs. I'm not going to do drugs. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. And they didn't get the chance because they died last night. Um, and not just people involved in alcohol or people involved with drugs or there are just uh, there's some blue collar people out there living normal lives, trying to pay their bills and and raise their family and go to the ball game, and tragedy strikes them as well. Uh, there was somebody I was talking to not long ago. Of, um, uh, she texted me and said that her, I believe it, she said it was her niece, four year old um, four year old niece, um, was diagnosed with leukemia when she was one. She fought for three years and died. Um, good Christian people, soul winning, tithing, teaching, faithful every week. It could happen to you. A man uh, got up to go to work one morning, put on his boots, kissed his wife on the cheek and peeked in the kids' room, saw that they were still sleeping and went and kissed him on the head, you know, and, and went off to work early in the morning like he always does and a uh, good Christian man, good layman in the church. And if there's work to do, maintenance to do, he's there to help. Um, grounds, he's there to help. Anything the pastor needs, anything the church needs, he's there as, a, as a, an extension of whatever the church may need in, in his ability to help. Good, faithful man, minding his business, obeying the traffic laws, uh, pulled through an intersection, was T-boned, and died immediately. How, what? It could happen to you. It could happen to me. It could happen. Uh, you don't feel well. You go to the doctor. Bad news. Run tests. Our friend Dan Shinneberry <laughs> went for a couple scrapes and bruises and cuts and didn't walk out of the hospital. 
You know, I don't know what 2023 holds. I, I don't know what kind of tears will be shed. Tears of joy, right? I mean, it could happen. Tears of joy. Uh, Hudson, Houston and I were looking at some houses the other day, just kind of scrolling, looking, you know. We came across this one that, that cost um, $1.6 million. And he said, Dad, let's look at it. I said, no, we're not going to. No, we're not looking at it. It's the point of looking at it. He said, if we got that house, I would cry. I said, I would too. I would too. He said, I would cry from happiness. I, would say, I said, I would cry from the electric bill, <laughs> from the heat bill. Uh, I would cry too, you know, I'd cry too. And, uh, and tears of joy. I'm, it doesn't mean it could happen to you. Doesn't mean It doesn't necessarily have negative connotations to it. It could have good ones. You could hit prosperity this year. Your business could take off. You could get over some of the obstacles in this, uh, that you've been fighting and trying to climb over the past several years. You could really make a breakthrough this year. It could happen to you. But also the bad things could happen. Hard things could happen. Now, uh, I want you to open to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 4, chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Look at verse number, are you there? 1 Peter chapter 4. Amen, everybody there? Okay, let's, uh, I want us together, I don't want to leave anybody behind. I want everybody to look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12. Beloved, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Look at the first two words of the very next verse. But rejoice. But rejoice. Across the chapter, uh, across the page in my Bible, chapter 3, verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if, get, see that word if? I circled that in my Bible. If ye suffer for righteousness' sake. If ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd help me this morning as I, as I preach this message. Uh, Lord, I don't, um, uh, I don't, I'm not standing up here trying to preach a good message um, uh, and, and, and say, hey, that was a good message. Uh, but Lord, I want to help people. I want to be helped, and I want to help others. Edify, convict, encourage, help lift. Scripture says it, Lord, if ye which are spiritual, lift, lift another up, lift each other up. Lord, help us to speak life into each other. Help us to help each other. Oh God, everybody's having a hard time. Everybody's going through the ringer. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us so we can be profitable stewards and servants, sons and soldiers to our Savior and to bring glory to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It could happen. It. What is it? Tragedy. What is it? Heartache. What is it? Trials. Temptations. It could happen to you. It could happen to you. But this is where I want to tie in my, my second thought. If and when it happens to you, have faith. Anybody ever, somebody ever told you to have faith? Can anybody, anybody ever, somebody tell you, hey man, have some faith, have some faith, have some faith. But can I tell you that just having faith is empty if that faith is not directed toward God? Jesus said, yeah, faith, but he's, Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. In God, and Jesus answering, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. I don't know what 2023 holds. I think, you know, I, got, I have some things that I, I hope it holds and some things that I, I want to bring to the table, but the fact of the matter is, is um, going into the new year is like a blind date. You're going into the year. You don't know what it looks like. You don't know what it smells like. You don't know the. <laughs> you don't know what. You don't know what's coming to dinner. You don't know what's coming to dinner. Um, 
But the thing is, is if you walk into the new year and you, you, you can't help it, whether you're walking, running or laying down or you're trying to stay in 2022, 2023 is here. It's here. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? So as the thought hovers in your mind this morning of it could happen to me, think of all the things. No, nobody's prepared for it. We all should be. A lady said to me the other day, she said, I couldn't, I don't know how I could, I don't know how I would feel if I knew I was going to die. No, because the conversation piece was about somebody um, was told they, they had a certain amount of time to live. And I told her, I said, you are going to die. You are going to die. It is appointed unto men once to die and after this, the judgment. Lady, you're dying right now. I meant to call Jesse on her birthday and say, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Y'all remember that song? Y'all remember that? That's a great happy birthday. You're one year old. Miss Jesse, come sing it for it. No. You're one step closer to the grave. That's what I told her. It's a new year. You know what everybody should do? I'm one year closer to death. I'm almost dead. People are like, oh, that's such a morbid, dark type of attitude. And I'm, I, I get it. I, I believe that there's a, fine, um, uh, there's a fine balance between having a, a, um, uh, 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 a real outlook, an outlook of what's real and what is going to happen, factual evidence, and being able to say, but I know who I believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You said, Brother Jake, what did you just say? I said that I'm saved and I know it, so I'll clap my hands. That's what I said. I'm saved and I know it. I know that I'm going to die whether it's from old age or a, a tragedy, I know that I'm going to die. But I know where I'm going. I know that he's going to deliver me because I've drank of the water that will never thirst again, Jesus said to the woman at the well. I will never thirst for salvation. I'm saved and I know it. I know that I'm saved. I know that I am. I know that I'm going to heaven. But that doesn't make me feel better about cancer. It doesn't make me feel better about Man, Deacon, he's, he's nine months old or however, he's, he's a runt is what he is. He's nine months old, he's small, he's itty bitty, and yet he's so fragile. That little baby is dependent, that he is dependent upon mom and dad and the people around him to keep his eyes on him because his life is so fragile, and little babies die too. Not everybody that's old dies. Little babies die. Young men and young women die. Tragedy strikes. I had a friend at college who, he didn't, I, I didn't, um, I I never really, um, really got all the way in uh, when I went to Hiles Anderson College because I didn't, I'll tell you flat out, I didn't want to go. It's not something, but I'm glad I did. I met friends, I've had experiences, but there was a guy in the sailor ministry. His name was uh, Matt Guzzi, Matt Guzzi. And he married, um, uh, I believe it was Amber Hooker at the time. Fresh, newly married, um, uh, early, mid-20s. He's a good friend, best friend's with uh, a guy who was kind of a, took me under his wing a little bit. His name's Pat Higgins. He's a pastor in New Jersey. Uh, his dad passed away just a, few, a couple years ago. And uh, he, he's the pastor of a church there. They're best friends from New Jersey in the sailor ministry together at First Baptist Church of Hammond. Um, Matt graduated, married uh, Amber, and uh, got cancer and died. Dude's in his 20s. That's not fair. Got his whole life. At, he's got his whole life ahead of him. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. None of us have our whole life ahead of us. That's a humanistic type of thinking. He has our life ahead of us. I know not what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds it. So when we say have faith, have faith in who? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I went to college with another, he was a, he was a, a gym rat, but he, um, he was um, uh, oh, a pastor in uh, Pennsylvania. You went to college with him, um, Trout, Trout, his son, John Trout, um, got involved in weights, got involved in heavy lifting, got involved with some people, took some stuff he shouldn't, his heart exploded. What? Big health stuff, big lifting weights and what? Oh, okay. Tragedy, man, folks, it's everywhere. The Bible says, the Bible says that Satan, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he, whom he may devour. I watched uh, the other day, I get um, um, these videos like, um, National, not, like National Geographic on like a news feed, and it, shows, uh, it showed a lion. 
his, you could tell that guy, he was locked in on a warthog. He walked past gazelles, and wildebeest, and buffalo, and zebra. And he walked past all that stuff because he was locked on something he knew he could get. He knew he could get it. 2023, don't, know, don't be the one, let the devil walk past you. Don't you be one that he locks eyes on. You say, well, how do we do that? How can we go through life knowing that a it could happen to you type of possibility could happen to me and I'm just supposed to be okay with it? How can I avoid it? It's not, it's not about avoiding it. It's about getting through it. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say, though I go around it or dig under it or, or avoid it altogether. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. You see, he had faith, but he had faith in God. He had faith in God. Um, it's, it's vital for us to have faith in God. Have faith for your pastor to deliver you. That's not the case. Have, pay, have faith that mom and dad will know all, all exactly what to say all the time. That's not the case. Have faith that um, uh, uh, a GOP candidate is going to save America. Not the case. No, folks. God is going to save America. God will help America. God will help us. God will pull us out of here. But you could say it could happen to you. It could happen to you. Well, since it's going to happen, good or bad, you got to have faith in God. Faith in God. Let me give you a, a couple of illustrations. There was a man, a, um, a man who liked to climb mountains, and he went to uh, southeastern France, and um, he was told that if he climbed up a certain hill and got to a certain height, he could see the Alps several miles away. So he did it. Uh, and he could see nothing but the mist and the fog that was in his, his uh, straight sight uh, a line of sight. And the man that was with him, he said, sir, you must look up higher. Sir, you must look up higher. And he says, as soon as he lifted up his head to see higher, he could see the Alps. You see, many times in our Christian life, we don't look up higher. We don't look higher. We've looked to a certain point and said, well, God, might not, God must not be past this point. God must not be God must not be there because there's no evidence and I'm not feeling his presence. Man, I prayed for a long time this morning and I, I, and I was praying and I was praying. And I was like, okay, I pray until I feel something. Nope. And then it reminded me, my prayers do not dictate that God is going to do what he's going to do. Though I get, if I get up from prayer feeling charged or, or still down, God is faithful God will always deliver. God has never failed. He's always delivered. And what I needed to do is I needed, in my prayer this morning, I need to just look up a little higher and look past my infirmities and say, though I, I mean, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I mean, last Sunday, I prayed until I started crying over intercessory prayer for people and crying over my own uh, um, uh, 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 inabilities to measure up. The thing is, is on that measure up to who? Measure up to what? There is no measuring up. He's paid it all. God looks down at me and he sees Jesus. What a thought that is that God looks down and sees Jake Jackson covered by the blood of Christ. That I'm covered by it. And what I need to do and you need to, what we need to do is continue to look up higher. And we too can see those snow covered peaks. Let's look up higher. Let's obey a command to look up higher, look to the hills, look beyond from where our help cometh. Faith is made up of belief and trust. Belief and trust. Say that with me. Say belief and trust. Belief and trust. One more time. Belief and, trust. belief and trust. Faith is made up of belief and trust. And many people believe in God. They believe in him. Many people reference God, but they don't reverence God. Many people believe in God, but they don't trust themselves and they don't trust them or trust themselves into keeping his care. Uh, they, they, um, and consequently, what do we do? If we are not filled with his care, we're filled with worry and despair. 
Uh, I, I spoke to a young lady at some length this past week um, about all kinds of different circumstances and situations. And, and um, uh, I said, listen, I, your feelings are justified, totally justified. I said, but look up higher. You say, look up higher. I said, yeah, look up higher. Look to the word of God. Look to the word of God. Obey those Bible principles. And, and she said, in a perfect world, this is what would happen. And it was a nightmare scenario. I said, no, in a perfect world, there would be repentance and reunion and redemption. And you could just see her eyes open. I said, it's your job to honor. Honor. Do what's right and honor your parents. Well, how do I do that? By obeying the Bible. Obeying scripture. Listen to your pastor. Folks, you can do anything and everything, but until you have prayed, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Fervent prayer. of You say, what's fervent prayer? I think it's, to me, my fervent prayer is, man, my hands squeeze a little tighter. My teeth grit. I talk to the Lord with, with maybe some, some, some urgency in my voice. And I stay there and I say, oh God, I'm not getting up until you bless me. Just like Jacob wrestled with the angel and he would not let him go until he got his blessing. Lord, I'm not getting up until, I, Lord, I'll go preach, but I'm coming back. Lord, I'll go do what I got to do, but I'm coming back. You will bless me. See, God, God is excited by faith. You see, when a Christian lives by faith, that gets God excited. That gets the Holy Spirit stirred. When a Christian lives by faith, that forces, and I don't mean strong arm, but that forces God to action. Do you understand that? But when you live by worry and you live by fear and you live by despair, God says, I can't do anything for you. You can't come to church and say, Living by faith in Jesus alone, trusting, con confiding, confiding in his great love. From harm all safe in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. Many Christians sit there and they sing that, but they don't hear the words. Because fear is screaming in their ear. Look up higher. Just look up higher. There is a group of people who... Um, went to the um, national um, the uh, uh, national mint, and they were told by one of the guys they were working at the the smelting pot. Um, uh, he, he works there, and he said, "Here's a really neat trick. If you dip your hand in really cold water, you can take some of that and pour it. Over, just take some of that that smelt and pour it over your hand, and it won't burn you." And he asked, step, "Sir, step right up. Would you do it?" Would you do that, sir? Can I show you if you put your hand in this water and pour some of that smelt over your hand that you'll be all right? He said, no, no, I, I believe you. I believe you. And the man's wife stepped up and he said, ma'am, would you, would you do it? She said, yeah, I'll do it. And she did it and, he, and, and she did it and, and it all worked out and she didn't get burned. And what, wow, what a neat trick, you know? Um, uh, uh, not trick, chemistry, right? Um, but you put your hand in there and, and, and science, Amen. And he, the, the, the worker said to the gentleman, he said, sir, you believed me, but she trusted me. You believed me, but she trusted me. See, there's a, there's, a, there's a big balance, there's a big difference, folks, between believing God and trusting God. Believing and trusting, but you can't have trust until you do the believe. Belief is just something that you think. Trust is something that you do. You do. Do you trust God? Listen, I, anybody saved in the room this morning? You're saved and you know it. I, you know you're going to heaven. I believe you. Okay, what did you do? You trusted Christ. You trusted Christ. Now, why don't we trust Christ with our finances? Why don't we trust him with our health? Why don't we trust him with our kids? Why don't we trust him with our separation? Why don't we trust God with, with, with the way that we walk and we talk and we live in this world? We should, I trusted him with my eternal soul to keep me out of hell, and yet I'm, I'm going to miser away anything else. The Bible says, excuse me, that God gave us his son. That's like the pinnacle of anything that can be given. He gave us, God gave us the best. He didn't give us Gabriel. He didn't give us Michael. 
He didn't give us a, a, some other, some, some archangel, some flaming sword angel, some bad to the bone uh, warrior angel. He didn't give us, he gave us his son, Jesus. Why would he withhold any good thing? So if we have taken part of his son, why would we hold, withhold any good thing from him? Have faith, folks, but have faith in God. As you go through 2023, it's, 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 there's going to be some, some, uh, some roadblocks, some bumps in the road. Life is not a bump in the road. Life is a bumpy road. Life is a bumpy road. And you're going to hit all kinds of roadblocks and obstacles. So when you run into these things, have faith in God. Have faith in God. I want to give you three points this morning very, very quickly. Number one, number one, uh, uh, God did not fail men in the old times and he doesn't fail them now. God didn't fa fail men in the old days and he doesn't fail them now. He doesn't fail them. History points us uh, to that no man that has ever had faith in God has ever been left disappointed. You say, well, David, you know, David quotes that verse and I have it in my, my notes this morning about, um, you know, I've never seen uh, the, the righteous begging bread. Well, I have. I mean, I have, I mean, I've seen saved people standing in soup lines. I've seen saved people on welfare. I've seen saved people, not because of laziness, not because of, but times are tough. Life is hard. I, I've seen it. David might have not have seen it, but I've seen it. You say, well, where's the, what are you getting at? The Bible says, here, here, I'm giving you a guarantee, Christian. Here's the guarantee. The Bible says that Jesus was obedient even to the cross. That means he was obedient to death. He was obedient to the Father even though it killed him. How obedient are we? Lord, I'll be obedient as long as you keep me financially prosper. That's pretty shallow. I'll be obedient as long as you keep my family untouched from any harm, from any ailments, as long as you make us successful. Keep us, you know, let us live out our dreams. And that's pretty shallow. That's not your will. That's not God's will. That's your will. Jesus was obedient even to the death of the cross. You see, things, here's the thing. The Christian has got to have the same mindset to where we, or the same dedication, the same commitment to where you say, I'm digging in my hill, my heels, Wearing some stilettos. I almost fell over here. Uh, 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 you dig in your heels and you say, I don't care what comes. I'm not moving. Because if Job can do it, you can do it. What an honor. What an honor it is for the devil himself to attack Job. Not some minch not some demon, not some third-hand, fourth-hand demon, but Satan himself said, that dude's so righteous, I'm going to have to handle him. Job was a righteous dude. Excuse me, Job. Job was a righteous man. In all the land, no man like Job. A righteous, good, honorable man of ethics and integrity and morals. And the devil said, watch and see what I do took his family, took his wealth, took his health, and his wife came up and said, Job, just curse God and die. Do you still maintain your integrity? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why quit now? Why quit now? Once you've lost it all, why quit? Most people get it all and then quit. Job got it all, maintained his relationship with God, then lost it all. That's when you would quit. And Job said, nah, why quit now? I'm too close to heaven to give up on God. I'm too close to dying and seeing my God and looking him face to face to, to quit now. The finish line's right in front of me. Why would I quit? Folks, do you know Job was a human being? As far as I know, y'all are human beings. Unless the CIA's let you guys out of Area 51. Uh, and we've got some aliens in here. I don't know. Uh, uh, but um, God didn't fail people in the old days. He won't fail you now. If you go to Hebrews chapter 11, you'll find almost, I think it's 25 to 27 times the word faith, 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 
faith. And I wish I had, the, the chapter is known in, in Christian circles as the hall, the hall of faith, the, the chapter of faith. And I don't have all the time, but if you'd go through it, you'd see that Abel, Abel had a worship of faith. He had a, uh, his, his, his um, uh, uh, we have worshiping faith. Uh, with Enoch, you have a walk of faith. Enoch walked with the Lord and he was not, for the Lord took him. With Noah, you find a witness of faith. He witnessed and witnessed and witnessed. Rain's coming, but he was faithful. With Abraham, you had a wandering faith. You said a wandering, I don't mean wandering like, oh, I wander. No, a wandering faith. You said, what is a wandering faith? A wandering faith is, is this is where the Lord led me. That's where I'm going. He, he came home and said, Sarah, we have to go. She said, where are we going? He said, I don't know. Just pack up. We have to go. Well, what time now? Well, which direction? Can you tell me at least which direction? He said, I don't know. Just pack up. We're going. A wandering faith. You know, sometimes in life, you'll feel like you're drifting from here to there to here to there. And, and you'll go, what is going on? Why, why can I not feel settled? I told my dad on the porch yesterday. I said, dad, I wish I was normal. He said, yeah, me too. Uh, I said, dad, I, I, I wish I was a normal person to where I got up every day, I went to work, and I could come home, and my focus was on paying the bills and raising my family, and that was, those were the big responsibilities. Go to work and, and have my family or have my life, and I didn't have to really like put God into everything. I said, because I'm, the, I'm a pastor and a driver and a family man, and I got all these different responsibilities, I'm supposed to do all these different things. And I feel like I'm, it's, my life has been spotty. I don't feel like I've been at a, a company for 25 years and get my pension and all that stuff. That's all great. It's all great. I'm all for that. But that's not my journey. That might be yours. And if it is yours, then have a worshiping faith. Have a walking faith. But for some Christians, it's a wandering faith. It's a faith where you go, dear God, I'm depending on you for everything. You're, you're going to have to take care of my future as you're going to have to take care of my today. He had a wandering faith. Sarah, she had a waiting faith. 99 years old, having a baby? What? Let me tell some of you, I don't, uh, uh, the single people and the young people in here. God will bring the right person along. God will bring the right person along. He will. But wait. Wait. Don't be like Miss Sarah and settle. <laughs> Brother Dan, Brother Dan, Brother Dan. This is the coward's castle. You can't accept, attack me right now. Wait till I get out and then you can have at me, okay? I just, I gotcha. Um, that's just for zinging me a couple times the last couple of days. So, uh, Sarah, Sarah had a waiting faith. No, truly, truly. Uh, uh, I love to laugh and everything, but let's bring it back to center. Sarah had a waiting faith. The Bible says when the angel of the Lord came, and he told Abraham, you're going to have a baby in your old age. The, baby, the Bible says that Sarah was hiding around the corner and laughed within her heart. And then she came out, you know, brought the lemonade and, and, and um, uh, brownies, you know, or whatever. And, and uh, he said, wherefore didst thou laugh? And she said, I didn't laugh. He said, you did laugh. You did laugh. Now, you're going to have a baby, whether you like it or not. You're going to have one. And, 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 I mean, it's, it's, it's funny to, I mean, it's not funny, it's kind of scary, but scary and funny to think about a, a hundred year old man and a 99 year old woman having a baby. What? That's crazy. But, but Sarah had a waiting faith in Moses. Moses, he had a work of faith. You could tie his in with, with Abraham's also a wandering faith. In verse 32 of chapter 11, we have um, uh, uh, the success of faith and it's exemplified in Gideon's life. Gideon, Gideon, the song of faith given by uh, uh, Barak and, and um, the prayers. Man, I owe how I could praise, if I could praise the Lord like David does in the Psalms and the supplications like David prays. If I could pray like David prayed, but many times I can't, I don't have those words. I've, I've read the Psalms before. Anybody ever read the Psalms before and go, what? that's exactly how I feel. I don't talk that way, but that's exactly how I feel. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit of God utters groanings on our behalf that only he can understand. That he understands. That he says things that our heart can't even put into words. God won't fail you. He didn't fail these men of old through fire and flood and stones and swords and destitution and death. 
in disparity and affliction and torment, God delivers his people. He always has. He always has. If you, if you, I like to, I like to read about Elijah, Elijah and his faith. God answered his prayer and brought fire from heaven with that um, competition with those other prophets, I guess you could say it was. And it consumed the fire of heaven, consumed the altar of wood, the stone, the sacrifice, and all the water that was around it. And he answered his faith by sending a downpour of rain on a parched, famine-ridden land. God says, I'll show myself, and I'll always show myself great. I'll always show myself great. I think of things like the Fox's Book of Martyrs, and it tells us of the men and the women uh, but with faith in God, not just faith in something, but faith in God, they faced every, every conceivable obstacle, every torment. I watched um, a, a, a movie that was writ- given to me by um, uh, Voice of the Martyrs. They sent me uh, a, a video by, of, um, oh, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Romania. Wormbrandt, I, I kept thinking Wearsby, but that's an author. Wormbrandt, Wormbrandt, who was um, taken uh, into custody, uh, he and his wife, but separate camps, beaten day in and day out and day in and day out and day in and day out. You say, but I'm a saved Christian. This isn't supposed to be happening to me. Show me where. We just read in Second Peter, he said, if, if, you suffer for righteousness sake, which leaves the door open to it could. It could, and it happened to Mr. Vernbrandt. But they were tortured for centuries. Persecution, it was all, um, uh, uh, the mercy was given as they were beheaded. That was, that was the mercy. The mercy was that they breathed their last breath as they sung praises and hymns to the Lord as they burned in fire and flame as the pagan heathen and the religious looked on. Now, I think our hearts should burn within ourselves when we think of these people and we read the Bible and say, my heart is stirred within me because I want to have this faith in God. I want to have... I want to be a spiritual giant one day. I want to have the same God work in my life today that he did back then for these men. God worked in the old days. He still works today. Number two, God is able to work miracles today. You think you're in a situation that you can't get out of. You think there's no end in sight to to the pain that you're in, to the situation that you're in, to the circumstances that you're in. But if there's a God in heaven, and there is, then he can still work miracles. Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall in no doubt in, no doubt in his heart, but shall, be, uh, but shall believe in those things which he, sh- uh, which he saith shall come to pass, uh, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now to us, those are, that's kind of like shocking to even hear. Just ask for it. Just believe in my heart. And it doesn't mean a Lamborghini. It doesn't mean a five-bedroom, um, a, a four-bath a house with a, a sitting on 100 acres that's got a stocked lake in the back and a pool for the kids, and it's got a shooting range. It doesn't mean stuff. It doesn't mean all that stuff. I think if we major on what we think is minor, which is major to God, the minor material things will come along later anyway. And if not, we'll be okay with it. I don't, man, I, I've grown up. I used to look at these big, cool trucks going, man, I, want, I don't want that. I used to look at a big mansion. I don't want it. Houston's like, look at, let's look at that house. I don't want to look at that house. It's not practical. I don't need it. If I need it, God will give it to us. We just need like 17 more kids to have a place that big, which, no. Um, we've ran out of names. You know, we've, we've ran out of names. Um, uh, so he says, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye shall receive them, and ye shall have them. But that's according to the will of God. And he says, but whatsoever things ye shall desire. Here's, the, here's, here's the, the catch to that. My desires need to be his desires. How do I get his desires? By understanding this book. I said it in Sunday school this morning. Uh, I said, uh, from the foundations of the world, this book's been written. God wrote his word and then said, let there be light. 
God said, this is who I'm going to be. This is the God that I am. Now let me show these people that I'm going to make what kind of God that I am. God is the same kind of miracle. I have a book by George Mueller, and I like reading from, about George Mueller. Uh, he'd been, again, a, a mighty work of prayer. That man prayed like you wouldn't believe, and he based all of his faith on, the, on these promises, on, on this, um, excuse me, <clears throat> on this belief and this promise. Um, at uh, his first prayer, he waited for God's answer, and then he gave thanks. But once he read this and read this and read it over and over again, he began to pray and thank God for it before he even quit praying for it. He started thanking God for it before it ever even came. Folks, I tell you this morning, God answers prayer. Maybe not always on your timing, maybe not according to your will, but God answers prayer. God answers prayer. Most of us are um, uh, too, too much like um, uh, uh, the woman who, uh, I love the story, who a woman who she receives a bill in the mail. She receives a bill in the mail and runs over to a friend's house and says, I, I, I can't pay this bill. I need help with this bill. And they said, well, didn't you get my letter in the mail yesterday? The letter in the mail yesterday was the answer for the bill today. Many of us are like that. We run and we get a, we get a, 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 we get a bill, we get an, a report, something bad comes along, and we say, oh, no, I got to run and find the answer. But the fact of the matter is the answer is already there. We lose out so much by not claiming the promises of God. I told the, the same young lady that I referenced earlier that I talked to this week, I said, you know what you need to do? I said, you need to claim some promises in the Bible. I said, tell me a promise that you're claiming right now. She couldn't name one. I said, I, I got one I'm claiming. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I'm saved. I said, how about this one? Whatsoever you ask, believing you shall receive. What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? Ask and seek and knock. What about this one? I said, girl, have some faith. Have some faith in God. Have faith. Folks, it's hard to have faith in God when you don't know what God is all about. Well, how can you know what God is all about? See, folks, this book is a lifetime of reading. It's not something you read once or twice and then you're done with it. You read it and you read it and you read it and you read it because God is going to open your eyes for the very thing that you need. Number one, God, uh, uh, God is able, <clears throat> number one, he did not fail men in old days and he won't fail us now. He's able to do the same things. Number two, God can still work miracles. God can still work miracles. And lastly, number three, he's gonna take care of the future. You know, God's gonna take care of the future. There was a, a girl, she said, I don't know what's in the future, but I know the Lord is and I know I'm in him. I don't know what's in the future. Folks, I don't know what 2023 holds. We should, put 20, we should put a banner up, 2023, and put a question mark behind it. I don't know what's in 2023, and neither do you. You know, I could die this year. You could die this year. You, one of your kids could die this year. Your spouse could die this year. You say, oh, don't speak that into existence. I don't believe that garbage. Don't say it. No, I don't believe that. Name it and claim it. Speak it into existence. Let Joel Olstein and Creflo Dollar and, and, and uh, 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 all the other apostate preachers have that stuff. Speak it into existence. God holds our existence. God holds today and God holds the future. Do you have faith in God? I don't know what's in the future, but I know God is. And I know I'm in him. Now it's true that most of us and most of our worries are things that never happen. Wednesday's Bible study, my first point was, don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you think. Most of the things that we worry about, worry about they never really happen. What happens is we anticipate trouble. We cross bridges that we never even come to. We spend all kinds of sleepless nights and all kinds of tossing and turning nights thinking about things which will likely never even come to pass. People become chronic professional worriers. Even Christians worry until it becomes a habit, until it becomes a part of your nature. The problem comes, the very first thing you do is worry. That's sin. Someone said, worry is the interest we pay on trouble before it's due. Worry is interest you pay on trouble before it's due. 
But the Bible says, commit thy way unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Or commit, yeah, and thy thoughts shall be established. Or commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Folks, so if you're a Christian this morning, yet you worry about provisions for the future, then I want you to hear what David says. He says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Now to that, I would like to say, I have never seen a Christian starve to death. You know what I've seen? I've seen a lot of Christians who commit their way unto the Lord and they gain weight. <laughs> the Bible says that the, that the bones of the righteous are made fat. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet what you, for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor, uh, uh, not gather, or nor yet gather in, uh, into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Paul said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known, be known unto God. Be made known unto God. I'll tell you what, Pastor Jackson started it, and it was a conversation about mental health. And Wednesday started mental health awareness. September, we started talking about it, and we got locked in on Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. And I'll tell you what, that's been a great asset and a great tool just to this guy. If you're not using it, you're, you're missing out. You're missing out. The Bible says, in everything, prayer. In everything, prayer. And think on these things. Think on these things. Pastor Jackson preached this message years ago about uh, uh, kicking the old demon out of the house, but that demon went and found seven others stronger than himself, and he was worse off the second time than he was the first time around. So what happens? It's the, it's the principle of replacement. The principle of replacement. Kick out the bad and replace it with something good. So if, you have to, if you've, you've got worry and doubt and fear and fret in here, kick it out and go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and, and memorize that. Memorize it. And why? Because the Bible says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So another kind of faith that I don't have time to tell you about is not just have faith in God, but it's saving faith. Saving faith. And everybody in here, just a few moments ago, you raised your hand and said you believed and that you, you trusted that saving faith. Well, why are we lacking in the, in, the, in the faith in God for everything else? There's some older folks in here. Maybe your pension's not what it should be. Retirement doesn't look promising. Have faith in God. Maybe you've got some wayward children. Have faith in God. Maybe you're, you're too young to be old and you're just old enough to start having health issues. Have faith in God. Maybe you've been battling some things in your life lately that you just don't seem to be able to get a hold of. The Bible says in everything, prayer. And you can directly hitch that to the wagon of 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. All care, all care. So here it is. I know some people in this room today, the worst scenario has been played out. Dot, dot, dot. So far. It ain't over. People say it's not over till the fat lady sings. No, it's not over till the trumpet rings. And we haven't heard it yet. So you just keep plugging along. You may not be able to sprint anymore, but you can plod. You can keep going. One day at a time. So what could happen to you? Bad 2022? Something good. Something good could happen to you in 2023. But if it just keeps piling on, have faith in God. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me, please? I know there are some people who would just like to forget 2022. Some people who would just like to have it wiped from their memory. Just wash it out. Start over. I'd ask you not to feel that way. Because 2022 is making you who you are for Christ. Oh yes, some of the struggles were our own faults. 
some of the things we encountered were our, of our own doing. But if you'll trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your paths. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You know, God wants us to be like Jesus. Maybe you've gone through something unfortunate. Something in your life has happened that you're ashamed of, you're embarrassed of. It's a, it's a, a scar you will carry forever. Let, let God do something with it. I cannot tell you enough or urge you enough. Any more words, I'm out of words, to tell you, let God have it. Give God your 2023 and see what can happen with it. I'd ask you to stand with me. Could you, could you stand? I'm going to have Miss Jennifer begin to play. I want you to hit this altar right now and give God your 2023. Come on, there's that song right there. I have decided to follow Jesus. Have you ever made that decision? Decide it today. Man, I've decided to follow Jesus. No, he's the only one going the right way. He's the only one that knows the way. My father knows the way through the wilderness. I'm not just saying this stuff. I'm not just filling a time slot this morning. It's truth through and through. Give God your life in every way that you can. Let him direct it. Let him guide it. Let him make something out of you this morning. Let him do something with you. Give God your 23. Make a decision for the Lord. Don't just leave it here on January 1st. Do it every day. Make that decision every day. Every day, give your life to God. Every day, decide to follow Jesus. Every day. Don't just, because you'll get to a week from now, a month from now, a couple months from now, and you'll be all, you'll be forgotten about it. It's not because you're bad, it's because you're human. But if you'll make that decision every day, decide to follow Jesus. You can see it through. Let's break free from, from, from some things in 2023. Let's start something fresh and something new. In 23. Heavenly Father, as we close out the, the, the service today, you heard the prayers of the people that were up here. Uh, you heard every word. You heard every heart cry. You heard every worry and every struggle. Lord, I'd ask that you would help us to, like I said, do it every day, to give ourselves to you every day and let you make something out of us. You're the potter. You are the potter and we are the clay. Oh, God, make us a vessel for the finer. We look forward to seeing you one day. Lord, bless this church, bless our families. Help us to do something here uh, to bring you glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Kevin. Let's sing. Well, 